me, I have been teaching for 13 years now um, and I've been about 20 years in industry, so getting quite old. And um, and yes, it's all very exciting to be actually, actually to be able to launch this. Laura Howard is going to be joining us shortly. She's an ex-student of mine who is um, a professional prosthetics makeup artist. She's been working um, in industry now um, for a long, long time and on various different television and film um, projects, one of which was Doctor Who, um, and she's been doing various creatures. Um, for that, so you all may have seen Doctor Who. Um, Call the Midwife, she's done some um, silicone babies and seeming on that. Um, also, she's worked on Luther, if you've seen Luther. Um, she did um, some prosthetic lungs for Luther. Um, and she's worked on various different films, which I'm sure she'll tell you about. Um, King Arthur, The Titan, The Autopsy. So it's very, very exciting to have to have Laura here uh, and to chat with us about what she does. Um, a lot of which you will be learning if you decide to press on to my degree. Um, so the degree is obviously the FDA and the BA ONS in makeup artistry and hair design. The um, the level four and level five is the foundation degree in makeup artistry and hair. And then the level six is the BA ONS, which is like your top up, your full degree, which you graduate from at level six in makeup artistry and hair design. Um, if you're a level two progressing on to level three, equally as exciting because we're going to have new guest speakers on the level three program as well as the levels four, five, and six. So it's all very exciting. I can't wait to introduce you to her. Um, Laura's going to be doing some guest speaking. She's going to be a visiting lecturer for um, the degree which I've written in um, conjunction and accreditation with Mar Johns University. Um, it's a very, very exciting time for Makeup Artistry at City College Plymouth. So <laughs> fabulous. So just want to introduce you. Oh, well, thank you for coming to the masterclass today. Yeah, so uh, as Jen said, my name is Laura Howard um, and I'm a prosthetic artist in film and TV. Uh, I'm originally from Dartmouth down in Devon um, and I started off studying uh, fashion and photographic makeup and uh, theatrical and media makeup at South Devon College, uh, which is where I met Jennifer. She was my teacher. Um, after after I started, uh, well, after college, um, I was doing a few bridal makeups um, and kind of some short films in the local area. Uh, but for me, uh, I was still really struggling to kind of break through into the film industry. Uh, so I decided that I was going to move to London, uh, which I did about eight years ago now. Um, and once I'd moved to London, I discovered uh, Neil Gorton. Uh, which is a kind of all-rounder prosthetic artist. He has his own company. Well, he actually has a few companies, um, but he teaches a, a seven-week course, um, which was just a little bit more in-depth, just about sculpting uh, and the moulding process uh, rather than the application. So uh, I wanted to do that just to um, kind of learn just a little bit more, really. Uh, once I finished the course, um, I was persistent on ringing around um you have to ring these companies like once a week uh if not more um after i did that i finally got a chance um with neil gorton sent me an email um asking if i wanted to work in south africa for three months um which of course i jumped at the chance didn't even think about it uh, I said yes immediately uh, and within three days I was there uh, for three months and it was the best experience of life. Um, it was so much fun, the buzz and the atmosphere and the workshops and being on the film set was just so much fun. Um, the hours were really brutal, I do just want to warn you, um, over there especially in South Africa, health and safety is huge. So we were doing 100 hour weeks uh, and once my first ever day on set was a 38 hour day, um, 
which was insane, but I absolutely loved it because I was on a film set for the first time and the atmosphere is unlike anything else you would imagine. It's, uh, it's, um, so after that, uh, after I came back from South Africa, I was out of work for, for a couple of months. Um, and this is where I can't stress to you guys enough you need to bring these companies at least once a week, uh, potentially even two, maybe on the Monday and on the Friday. Um, you need to consistently ring <laughs> and, uh, and hound them, basically. Uh, and don't ever feel like you are hounding them, because, of course, when you're speaking to the receptionist that you've probably spoken to a few days ago, you feel like, God, like I'm annoying them you're not at all um they know that this is the way it kind of has to be and uh and that's the only way for you to get your foot through the door is to ring them all the time <laughs> um and it's all about timing yeah. as well so that's another thing where i say don't ever stop ringing them because you don't ever want to miss out an opportunity um i don't know how many times that's turned around and said uh oh if you'd rang yesterday we would have had work for you um, or something like that. So you need to just be really persistent on making sure uh, that they remember you. Um, after that, I started working for uh, a guy called Christian Mallet. Uh, I mention him because he's, again, a fantastic all-rounder in the industry, but also he has his own company um, and he does uh, trainee schemes for six weeks. Um, so again, um, I would Google search his name, um, just like he's won Oscars and all sorts. Um, but it's it's a good way for you guys to get your um, get your foot through the door as he does trainee schemes. Um, after that, I was um, well more, more working in the mold. That's where they start you off. Um, you kind of work your way up in the industry. Uh, you're not going to go straight to application immediately. Um, you'll be doing um, jobs in the market. Um, after that, I was working for Christian uh, for about five months on a, on a film called The Autopsy of Jane Doe, uh, which was great fun. Lots of poor fabrication. Um, great thing with horror films. There's lots and lots of gore. Um, after that, <laughs> I <laughs> after that I started working for Millennium FX, which is Neil Gorton's company. He co-owns it with uh, with two other producers as well, um, and it's actually the same building uh, that the seven week course was in, which is great because it kind of gives you an insight of uh, of what workshops are like. Um, I did ten months of in in the mold shop. And then I was given the opportunity to move on to Silicon area, uh, which for me um, is where I kind of found that this is where I wanted to be. I love casting Silicon. Uh, I just love working with it. It's a really great material kind of moving away from uh, from latex. Um, and it's great fun. Uh, and I loved um, the seaming side of it and the painting, uh, which is great. Um, I can give you a list yeah. of jobs that I've done as well, Jennifer. Do you want to read out a list of jobs? <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, that would be fantastic, Laura. Thank you. Okay, so um, things I've worked on um, is uh, Doctor Who, uh, Luther, um, Call the Midwife, uh, Game of Thrones, um, The Witcher, uh, Watchmen, uh, which came out on HBO, um, random adverts, a lot of random adverts, like I did an advert, so strange. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're, they're good, yeah. though, aren't they? They keep things ticking over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was, uh, I did an eBay advert, which was a zombie one. It had to be no blood because, of course, it had to be advertised whenever it wanted to be. <laughs> so it didn't have any blood, which was weird. Yeah. Um, oh, I did see eBay on your um, your website, actually. And I did, yeah, I did wonder about that one. That's interesting. Yeah. Really weird. Good fun, though. A new challenge. <laughs> 
um, <laughs> you've done lots of creatures on Doctor Who, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I think it was the whole of season ten. It was the one with Peter Capaldi. Um, I did the whole the whole season. Um, it was six months solid of on set. It was crazy but brilliant. Um, the the kind of normal hours is is twelve hours. Uh, if you're on set, that's a normal standard day. Um, but for prosthetic artists, if you need to apply an application that takes four hours then you need to make sure that you're ready before that 12 hour day. So then that's when you end up doing 16 to 20 hour days. <laughs> um, but the atmosphere <laughs> is like no other. <laughs> it's uh, it's great fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, other things, uh, I worked on the new um, Star Wars film, The Rise of the Skywalker. Um, <laughs> that was, again, really crazy, crazy hours, but loved it. Um, I think it's like Red Dwarf as well. Have you guys heard of Red Dwarf? <laughs> Good. Yeah, um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I have a question from Taylor here. Um, she asked, what university did you go to? Ah, so I didn't actually go to university. I did, uh, I just did college. Yeah, I did, uh, I did four years. Yeah. It, yeah, I, I think that that's uh, fantastic, though, isn't it, really? To starting exactly where these guys are at the moment exactly. and, and being able to progress for your career from there. Yeah. And um, I don't I don't think back then um, we did offer yeah, the type of degree courses that we offer now. So, uh, yeah, that's that's great question there, Taylor. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so what about them um, called Oh, sorry, say that again. You, you broke up a little bit then. Oh, I um, called the midwife you did, didn't you, with the silicone babies? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, there was... Yeah, sorry, there's just a bit of a bit of a delay there. Um, yeah, so I made lots of babies for Call the Midwife. Um, at one point, we were making, I think it was like 13 babies back to back. Uh, it was nuts. <laughs> it was babies <laughs> everywhere. Um, and some of them were kind of just static babies, so they don't move. Um, some of them had animatronic mechs in, so they move very, very realistically, and it's really weird, uh, really freaky. Um, yeah, Call the Midwife was uh, was great. Really fun. Oh, that's fantastic. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we go to the, your demonstration? Uh, no, just um, other things to look out for. Um, the newest thing that I've worked on is the new Disney film, um, which is coming out this month, actually. Uh, that's the newest one, um, which is Artemis Fowl. Uh, that was my first job that I was a lead application artist as well. So that was like a big win for me. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. We'll definitely look out for that, Laura. That's brilliant. And your name in the credits, obviously. Um, so. Dan Bradley <laughs> says, which TV and film is your favourite to work on? Ooh. Um, oh, that's a, that's a really great question, but such a hard one to answer. Um, <laughs> the, I would say the on, uh, on set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say uh, probably on set um, for Doctor Who, just because um, it's such a family feel uh, with Doctor Who, because they work together. It's the longest running TV show, so it films for 10 months, uh, which is wow. crazy. It's nonstop. Um, so once you're spending 12 hours a day with someone for 10 months solid, everyone becomes very, very close. Um, so it's really lovely. There's no hierarchy power that sometimes you get on set. Sometimes there's a very like, oh, you can't talk to me because I'm so-and-so. You need to talk to this person instead of talking to me. <laughs> so uh, that's a little thing that I don't really like with, uh, with on set, but Doctor Who, there's none of that because everyone just knows each other so well. So probably Doctor Who just for 
uh, of how relaxed it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. That's great. So I'm just going to hand over then, Laura, if it's OK with you, to Mary. Um, and Mary's going to present your uh, pre-recorded demonstration. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. video I'll be showing you a demo of a small bullet wound that I'll be doing on my housemate Tim uh, but before that I just wanted to show you my application table uh, and just some products and stuff that I uh, that I really like using um, so I'll start at the back here uh, this is a product called ProClean uh, which is for removing uh, any silicon uh, prosthetic makeups um, it's very oily based um, so it really really does a great job of getting it um, getting every last bit off um, at the back here we've just got some IPA which is uh, being used with the um, Skin Illustrator palettes. Uh, we also have um, some dried blood. Uh, this one brand is particularly great because uh, you do have to make sure that you buy the dried blood uh, otherwise it will stay very sticky in consistency and uh, it won't ever fully set. Um, we've got Paraffin Spirit here which is an amazing brush cleaner. Uh, really fantastic. If even if you've forgotten about a glue brush that maybe is uh, just completely uh, drenched in glue and just looking really really bad and maybe not being sal salvageable, uh, if you soak it in this for even about an hour, it will uh, lift off eventually. And uh, yeah, and you can use your brush again. Um, I've just got some translucent powder here. This is Grimace. Uh, I've actually had this uh, powder pot since I was at South Devon College. Uh, which is crazy, it's lasted me such a long time. Um, so we've got Derma Shield here, which I always apply to uh, whoever I'm putting a prosthetic on. Uh, it just gives that skin um, an extra layer of protection. Um, we've got Silky here, uh, this is in a very, <laughs> very sticky looking bottle now. Uh, but this is Neil Gorton's uh, Silky um, Adhesive Glue for silicon, and it's brilliant. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, we've got some Talisa's Thinners here, um, just in case uh, there's ever an error that you make, if you've put a little bit too much glue on an area that you want to take back, this is the product. Um, it just completely thins it down and lets you work with it and has a little bit more um, manageable time really. Um, this is, uh, well, it says Thick Filler. Um, so this is a Prosade uh, Thick Filler that's mixed with a chemical called uh, Cabasil. Um, it's very, very dangerous in its powder form, but once you add the Prosade glue, um, then it becomes like a really thick paste and you can use that to seal the edges of your prosthetic application, which I'll show you in the demo that I'll be doing. Um, so here we've just got various pots. So I've got a pot for my IPA for cleaning brushes. Uh, this is what my glue silky would be going into. And then I've got acetone in a glass um, one because it will melt through plastic very, very quickly. Um, so these are um, some of the wounds I've made today, actually. Uh, this is the one that I will be applying to uh, to Tim. Uh, so this is made out of Plat Gel 25, um, and I've run it with uh, Baldi's cat plastic. Uh, there are two types of cat plastics that you can buy. Um, I've done one that's based with acetone, rather than Super Baldi's, which is based with IPA. Um, so this is another, this is more of an exit bullet wound. Um, and then that's just a very subtle one there. Um, I've got some of my favourite brushes and tools that I like to use as well. Um, so I can't uh, recommend uh, Delian brushes. Um, they are fantastic. Um, sometimes a little bit pricey, uh, but definitely worth it because they will last you a very long time. I've had these for years and they're pretty much like brand new. Um, if you do look after them as well, using the uh, the paraffin spirit, uh, making sure you're keeping your brushes clean. Um, this is fantastic for um, just dabbing down the application once you've applied the glue. Um, and it's just an extra thing, just to dab into your powder here uh, and then just smooth out any air bubbles that you have underneath your prosthetic. Um, so then I've got some um, my swan scissors. Um, a little flicker splatter brush as well, which I will show you um, what I'll be using that for um, later on. And then just some tweezers, and then this just um, metal scalpel, just just in case 
there's only little edges and stuff that I need to fill uh, with our filler. Um, next thing I want to show you is the palettes. Um, there are countless palettes out there. Um, these are some of my favourite. This is the uh, Skill Illustrator one. I right, open that up. If I can one handed, hang on a moment. <laughs> okay, so there we are. That's just got your all your all your classic ones of rice paper, um, cedar brown, uh, some vein tones, which is great. Um, we've got some olive adjuster and some rose adjuster as well. Those two counteract each other. Um, and then we've got the complexion one. So it's got um, more of the warmer tones, um, light sienna and stuff, and red drum as well, which is great. Uh, again, they've got cool tones as well for um, for some more veining uh, and capillary as well. And then this is the fake FX one as well, which has just got yeah your primary reds, blood tones, aged bloods. Um, like I say, there are countless uh, palettes um, out there. This is just um, a kind of small selection uh, of mine. Um, this is a new company, a new Australian company, which is actually really, really great. Um, definitely a little bit cheaper um, than say say these ones as well. They're actually made by Skin Illustrator. Um, Neil's Materials does his own as well. This is his zombie one, uh, which is again, really, really good. Uh, I've got a, quite a few of Neil's Materials ones. That's just his fake FX one. Um, and then his flesh tone as well, and then dark tones as well there. Uh, what else we've got here as well? Um, these are Bluebird um, inks, which are fantastic. Definitely a bit pricey, um, but well worth the money, I would say. Uh, they are really, really great. Um, I also have a maquillage palette Oops, under here. Uh, this is a, a great investment. Um, it will last you your whole career uh, without any doubt. It's a uh, very, very thick, uh, very, very high pigmented um, cream palette. And it's just brilliant. I, I would definitely recommend buying this one as well. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. Um, obviously, I have, I have quite a few brushes. This is just um, a small selection of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's any other questions, obviously you can ask me uh, in the Q&A, um, but I just wanted to give you just a little heads up of what my application table looks like before the demo. All right, thank you. Hi everyone, so now I'm gonna start doing the uh, demo on Tim, which is uh, my trusty housemate here which is <laughs> helping me uh, as a lovely man as he is, being, a de uh, being, the, being the demo, being a part of the demo. So I'm just gonna start by uh, just cleansing the skin, um, just using um, simple um, purifying cleansing lotion. You can see that in the light there. Just to get um, any excess oils or anything like that, any dirt that's on the skin. <laughs> Intensing that in. No. <laughs> Uh, next I'm going to apply some of the, um, the Derma Shield that I told you about earlier, just giving that skin uh, an extra layer of protection. Comes up in a, like a weird foam like this. Just brush that on. Like so. And just let that dry a little bit for a moment. So as I showed you before, this is the um, prosthetic I'm going to be applying to Tim today. Just a very, very small uh, bullet wound. Uh, as you can see as well, um, it's not to the exact skin tone um, that is Tim's at the moment. So I'm going to colour match that with the skin illustrator. Uh, but that's no, no problems. Um, leave that over there. Still a little bit sticky. Feels good. Right. Um, Gonna start by just putting a just a small amount of glue uh, onto Tim's skin, just roughly in the area that I want it to be. You want to start off with just a small amount of glue to begin with, just to kind of tack it in place. Just 
going to keep working it until it feels like it's going a little bit more tacky. Yeah, it's feeling good now. And then you also want to put on some uh, glue onto the piece itself as well. Just uh, just in the middle, nothing uh, nothing crazy, not going anywhere near the edges yet. Just a little bit in the middle there, just until it goes a little bit tacky again. There we go. And then just finding out where your glue spot was on the arm, and then just lining it up. Giving it a little press. Okay, so now then we go around, around all the edges and uh, make sure all the rest of the silicon is, uh, is glued down as well. Making sure that it's going uh, tacky as well as you're going around. Give it a little stretch. Pump it down with your finger there. I always usually use the um, this tool as well that I showed you earlier, um, but that's for more of when you get round to the finer edges of the cat plastic. So keep working your way round, making sure they're getting right in there to not leave any um, trapped air, any little air bubbles. Give it a little stretch again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, gets a little bit stringy. You want to take your time when you're when you're doing this bit. You don't want to rush it because then the application could um, could kind of overlap itself and stick to itself, and that would be a nightmare for the cat plastic. So you just want to smooth smooth it off as you go in little sections. This glue is uh, really great because it goes off very very quickly um, but it's still movable once it's kind of going a little bit tacky uh, which is great so it gives you a little bit of extra working time. So I've just got one little section more to do now. Keep making sure that it's going nice and tacky. Now I'm going to get my um, my little stumper tool here that I showed you earlier. Just get a little bit of powder onto it. I'm going to make sure I'm just going to press into that just all the way around to the edge. Just to make sure there's not any little air bubbles that we've missed. Now you can kind of use your flange as well just to kind of lift it away just to see if there's little bits of cat plastic that still haven't quite glued. I don't know if you can see that on the top there, there's just a little bit there. Ah, I'm going closer. It's just a little bit of there that I've just missed ever so slightly. So I'm just going to go back over there. That's what's great about the little stomp tool. Remember, give it a nice stretch as well, keep it nice and taut. Just massage it in. No air bubbles. Okay, again, so I'm just going to go around to see if there's anywhere where I've missed. A little bit on that edge there as well.
Okay, anywhere else? That's all I can get there. Just gonna put a tiny bit there. Okay, make sure it's glued really, really well. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to um, go around with my little stomper again just to make sure that it's really, really down. And there we are. Okay, so that's all stuck on now. All ready to uh, get rid of the uh, get rid of the flange. Uh, I always just use uh, just a standard cotton bud um, with your acetone. Uh, as I explained earlier, this is um, Boldies cat plastic, not super Boldies, so you have to flash away with acetone. So, just go in my little glass jar. You don't want to have the cotton bud um, absolutely soaking, you just want it a little bit at the beginning just to kind of uh, just lift it so it's not going to um, drip anywhere else. There we are, so you can see I've started to uh, get through. So as you're just gently, you're kind of just very, very lightly dabbing it. It's not, it's not an extreme amount of pressure that I'm putting onto it. Just letting the cotton bud and the acetone dissolve it away. Now I'm going to cut that flange now. There we are. And then just keep the same same process. Just rolling motion. Gently just melting the flange away. across the shot. No, that's good. Okay, last little bit. And that's it. And go around the edges and just make sure that they're all all nice and neat. There's no little nasty spray out bits or anything like that. Marvellous. I always uh oh thank you Tim. I always go over with a with a powder puff. <laughs> just to take any uh, any sticky excess bits away. Or any of that, just to mat it back down as well. Okay, marvelous. I always uh, usually what I do with um, what I explained earlier with the filler. Uh, I would always just put um, just to put a small amount and stipple it around with a bit, a little bit of orange sponge as well. Uh, it just kind of seals the prosthetic in a little bit more. I'm gonna get a little blob of that. So yeah, you just want a very, very small amount. 
nothing too big and crazy. Just using a sponge just a tiny bit. Slightly go over the edges. Remember you want this to be a really, really thin, thin layer. You don't want it, to, you don't want to leave any thick, heavy bits um, left. Um, this stuff can go very thick very quickly. Um, so you don't want to leave it too long for it to get to that consistency. Okay, just going to hit that with a little bit of heat from the hairdryer, so excuse the noise for the moment. Anymore. So that feels good. Doesn't feel tacky. No, no residue or anything like that's coming off it. Lovely. So now we are ready to colour. Uh, as I showed you before um, with my uh, setup, I was using the um, Skinlet Illustrator palettes. These ones here. Um, I'll be using um, a combination of, uh, of lots of different ones. Uh, I'll be using Natural 1, Natural 2, uh, which is these two here. Um, I'll also be using um, the palette from um, Complexion as well, so they do, do some really nice warm orca um, and the pastel yellows and stuff like that as well. Um, and then we'll be finishing off with uh, Inside the Wound um, with the Skin Illustrator FX palette as well. So to start off with, I've got a squeezy bottle here that I showed you earlier of IPA. It's um, it's a lot easier than uh, getting like a spray and stuff because spray tends to go all over the palettes uh, and then you're kind of wasting a lot of inks that you're not using. So this is a little bit more uh, direct. So you just want to put just a little bit in there just to start activating them up. Swirl it round using the top of the uh, top of the palette lid uh, as a kind of my well my palette basically. Okay, just going to start putting in some colour. So this is my uh, stipple brush that I showed you guys um, earlier from uh, Delium as well. Absolutely, fully recommend this brush. It is brilliant. So just going to be very lightly start colouring that in there into Tim's natural skin colour. When painting prosthetics you want to do um, very thin washes. You can see this palette, It's uh, this is the colour at the top here and it's just very, very, very translucent. You don't want anything high pigmented at this stage. So keep blending it round. Okay, so that was um, natural one. I'm going to go on to mixing a little bit of natural two now, just to have a slightly warmer, warmer colour. Again, keeping the translucency as well. Some more um, 
some yellower tones. So I'm going to go into the warm orca. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to go in um, with the same style of brush, the stipple brush, but just a little bit smaller now. And I think I'll go in with um, this one here. I'm just going to go with in with some yellows and then some reds uh, and then probably some cooler tones as well. Okay, now I'm going to go in with um, some flicking now. This is the uh, the little cut-off brush that I showed you guys earlier. Um, so this is just a very simple kind of a flicking method, uh, which I'm going to do um, uh, with some uh, rose adjuster. Just trying to get the uh, consistency of the of the um, red adjuster because it is uh, it's very very pink, so you don't want anything uh, anything too extreme. Mm -hmm. I always have uh, this brush handy as well. It's just um, great, another one from Delium, uh, just to take back any paint uh, that comes out a little bit too harshly. And um, that's the case for uh, with flicking. So you just want to use the technique, just bring it down ever so slightly. Just uh, just a few slight, slight flicks, nothing, nothing too heavy and crazy. And then if there's a little bit too much, just dab it back. Platter. I'm going to go in with some cooler tones now as well. It's always good to have a little practice on yourself as well to see
going to go on um, with just some slightly more, a uh, little bit more of darker tone. Uh, I'm going to use this one. So I'm just going to go back in with using this one a little bit more. Just warm it up ever so slightly with, um, with some of the rose. It's more of like a like a dusty, dusty pink. Pretty much got my uh, got my base colour ready now. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let that just um, flash off a little bit more, and then I can go inside of the wound, and then we can mat everything down. So it's coming off a little bit shiny in the camera. Okay, that's feeling good. Okay, so when you're doing the fatty layer um, in the inside, I always try and do. Um, the real kind of primary bright yellow first and then knock it back with like a really um, like bloody orange colour more so it kind of shows the, um, the real insides of what the body looks like because it's a lot more bright than a lot of people expect. Um, put that one away. So I'm just going to be using um, just a little brush just so I can get into uh, all, the, ooh, all, the, uh, all the details. And I'm going to be using the um, the prime yellow, this one here. So my palette actually does have a little bit of uh, red already in it, so it's created a, a very kind of pussy fat um, colour, which is um, a little bit what we need, but we need to go a little bit more yellow because we do that on top to kind of build layers. So this is the kind of disgusting fatty layer that we're going to go for. So again, keeping the translucency as well. You don't want anything too heavy pigmented. Very subtle. Get into all the little fatty bits, all the little underneath bits. That hurt him. <laughs> Make sure I'm getting them all in the little creases. Okay. As you can see it's looking very yellowy. So now we'll put some um, put some blood tone in there as well. Kind of comes out a little bit like that. Just put it straight back onto the yellow. Give it all a good mix. I always like to do this very layer, very, very, uh, very, very thin, just so it kind of sits in all the muscular bits that I sculpted in there. Again, you want to go in with a, with a heavier, um, heavier colour now, just building up the layers. Like really get into the uh, into the flaps of the. Of the um, of the sculpt. Bring it a tiny little bit out if you want to.
There we go. Now you can really see the, the wound coming out now. I'm going to go back in again with, a, with another darker uh, red just to create um, that reel of depth of, uh, of this bullet wound. I'm going to be going on to the, um, the aged blood that's in the Fake FX, um, the Skin Illustrator uh, FX palette. Just a little bit darker, you can see there. Gonna spill it over the edges just a teeny tiny bit. And there we go. So then uh, the next final thing to do then um, is I'm just gonna powder just around the edge uh, and then we'll put some dried blood in it. So just using a little little sponge like this. dried blood that I showed you earlier. Uh, remember to look out for the dried blood, like I say, otherwise uh, the other stuff doesn't set and it will stay very, very sticky. So I'm just going to plonk a little bit onto my hand. You can see there. I'm just using a cotton bud so I have more of control of where the blood goes. those little flaps. Okay, I'm going to do um, just a little bit um, dribbling down because that's always fun. I think just out of here with the gravity of the blood it would pull it down. So again just with a just with a cotton bud, just so you've got a little bit more control of where the blood is going and just let let it do what it wants to do around the edges. And there we are. Then we can come a little bit closer. You can see there. Lovely. <laughs> thank you very much for watching and thank you very much Tim for being my model <laughs> and uh, if you have any other questions uh, please ask me in the Q&A thank you guys thank you Laura that was fantastic are you there? yes no worries Oh, brilliant. Okay. Well, that was fantastic to see. Thank you for doing that. Um, so we're going to go to some question Q&A. So anybody got any questions downside? Or would you like to turn on your um, microphone and camera and ask Laura personally any questions at all? I know we did a few questions in the beginning. I've got a question here, actually, from Karis. Um, does the dried blood stain much, Laura? 
Um, it does stain a little bit, uh, not as much as your kind of sugar-based ones that um, that usually have so much colour um, pigment in it that it just, yeah, as you say, it just stains the skin completely. Um, it does stain a little bit, but nothing that uh, a normal, any kind of prosthetic remover will be able to remove for you. Okay, that's brilliant. No questions at all, guys. Thank you for that one, Karis. That's brilliant. I know we were asking questions to Laura at the beginning, but is everyone happy? Has anyone got any more questions? Uh, I know Rachel was saying bits and pieces as we went through. Oh, another question here from Karis. Um, where did you get your palette from? Um, their own websites or places like, like Amazon? Ah, okay. So um, the Skin Illustrator palettes uh, you can get from um, things like the Makeup Armory uh, or Tilt Makeup as well. Uh, that's another great company. Uh, obviously, Neil's Materials um, does a large range of his own palettes as well, which he sells on his website. Um, so there, there's so many different ones out there. Like I said, the Ripper FX, which is a new Australian company, uh, they're really good because it's a little bit cheaper as well. Skill Illustrator palettes, they cost from um, from well, £60 to £85. Uh, Bluebird ones can be even more expensive. Um, so it's always good to look at other options as well uh, because there are other companies out there like Ripper FX from Australia. Yeah, brilliant. They are quite expensive, but they do last last and last eight actually so it's worth investing in a really good palette yeah thank it's you um just... i was gonna say it's the same with the uh with the maquillage palette as well that was um this one here um, um it will last you your yeah. whole career but it's uh but that was about 250 pounds this one here um but as long as you look yeah. after it and take care of it you will you will never have to buy it ever again <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's worth investing in thank you so i've got a question here from lexi who's the most interesting person you have worked on uh ooh, um interesting person uh God, uh, probably Matt Lucas. Um, Matt Lucas is hilarious. He's non-stop joking. Um, he will keep you entertained all day long. Um, the most, I'd say, one, yeah. probably one of the most nice, nicest was um, Charlize Theron. Um, she actually came and thanked us for doing such a great job on a, on a full body burn makeup. Um, because she said it was so good that it really freaked her out when she, she came on set and, and saw it. So she actually came and thanked us, which never happens, but it just shows how lovely she is as well. Yeah, that is that is fantastic. Karis has got another brilliant question here. Um, what oh, yeah. is the goriest and coolest result you've done on someone? <laughs> um, so I think the goriest, um, I had to make a taxidermy cat. Uh, so a lot of gore fabrication. <laughs> I that one actually, that was fantastic. It's, uh, yeah, so it is a real... Yeah. <laughs> you have a photo you could send to us, because that would be ace. Uh, you can see all those ones are, are on my website. Um, there, It's for the film Autopsy of Jane Doe. Uh, there's a cat in it and spoilers it doesn't make it <laughs> um, I think the coolest makeup I've ever applied to someone uh, probably was the most recent one for Disney uh, which unfortunately I can't really tell you much about until it's arrived because Disney will chop off my hands <laughs> 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 oh, okay, we'll have to watch out for that one then. I've got another question coming in um, from Dan Bradley. Would you ever have your own company? Uh, yeah, I, I would absolutely love to. Um, I'm currently at the moment in the process, um, as we saw with uh, the bullet wound 
I applied to Tim. Um, so I sculpted uh, and molded that and cast that myself. Uh, I'm currently in the process of making my own prosthetics to be able to sell on an Etsy page, uh, which is actually available for you guys. Um, if you'd like to see that, I could send the link to uh, Jennifer uh, and you can come and just look at some of uh, some of my work to sell. Um, I've done it as a... Um, has a nice kind of pricing, pricing range um, because obviously prosthetics are very expensive. But as I know, when you start off, you, you have limited money, um, but you still want to further your portfolio. So I've tried to do them as a, as a price uh, effective as really. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love to. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you can send all the details through, that would be brilliant. And um, uh, Laura has confirmed that she is happy to be um, and would like to get involved with um, being a visiting guest lecturer at City College. Um, yeah. So that's very exciting. And obviously with the teaching team, working with Rachel Wickett um, and the rest of the teaching team there, which is fantastic. Really, really exciting for us. Um, I've got one last question here from um, Rebecca. Have you ever worked in a theatre? I have, yeah. Um, that's where I started off as well. Um, I was doing Beauty and the Beast um, at the Torquay uh, Theatre Royal. Um, I did that for, for quite a few weeks. Um, the thing with theatre is that because it's so quick changed and so high pace, they tend to uh, actually teach the actors and actresses how to do the makeups themselves. They'll come in and do like a week course and just how to teach them the kind of basics. So then they can run in and out of uh, on, uh, on set and just quick changes and stuff like that. Um, but at the beginning, it's great to get into the mindset of theatre because it's so quick and it's so fast paced. So it really keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Yes, yes. And uh, that that really is fantastic for everyone to know, really. Have you done any fashion and photographic work as well as your television and film? I know you started yeah. years yeah, ago. Uh, uh, I've done a company uh, called Keds, which is an American trainer company. Uh, that was straight fashion and photographic makeup. Um, there was three models there uh taylor swift was actually there and she was the the face uh of of the whole advert um i wasn't doing her makeup though <laughs> she has her own personal makeup artist which is fair enough um i was yeah i was doing it on the four other models uh that were there and uh it's great fun because you end up in the weirdest places. Location for these type of things is always in the strangest of places where you look, kind of look around and you think, huh, okay, this is where I'm going to be spending my day. And it's little street corner of somewhere really random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it seems that you've um, had a good career so far. So how many years have you been doing it now, Laura? Uh, so it's been uh, six years six and a half years now yeah yeah uh, uh, and how long ago was it you trained with me at the beginning sorry say that again how long ago did we did we did you train with me at the beginning was it about 13 oh years ago or 12 years ago <laughs> i don't know i can't even, I've, yeah i've been okay. saying Oh my god, yeah, about 13 years ago probably. Um, yeah, I'm 31 now. <laughs> Time just goes so quickly. I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've had a you've had a good career so far, and it's it, you know, this is just the start of it, really. It's fantastic. Well done. It's so great for all of our level three students and level two students yeah. to actually be able to meet you today and also to to the teaching stuff as well. So it's even though know, we're doing it remote, it's still happening. And um, yeah, I'm feeling really, really happy. And hopefully, I've been, we've, you know, you've, we've all links inspired the students um, ready for their new courses in September. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us today. No worries. Um, and uh, I look forward to working.
you again. <laughs> seeing you again and um, thank you all for attending and we've got lots of thank yous coming in the in the chats everyone's really appreciating it so thank Aww, you so much you. Um, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon thank yeah. you Laura and I will send out the details of your, of your prosthetics and I'll send out the details of your website all right yeah brilliant thank you Jen bye <laughs> thanks Anne. take care <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,